Hello everyone, today I'm gonna tell you about the story of MRCS part A. I badly needed to be a member of Royal College of Surgeon. To do that, there's two exams that I should take before being a member. And these exams are MRCS part A and MRCS part B. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about the story of MRCS part A. I decided to take MRCS part A and immediately I faced by two difficult question question number one which college i'm gonna take the exam with as you know there's four colleges royal college of surgeon of edinburgh england glasgow and ireland most of my seniors choose edinburgh so i choose edinburgh there's no difference in the format of the exam and secondly you can change and your membership will be determined by the part b exam not by part a so I didn't give it that importance and I chose Edinburgh. And the second decision that I needed to take when I will take the exam. MRCS part A had three time periods. First one in January, second one in April, and the third one is in September. And I decided to take it in January. Immediately after I took the decision, I made a profile with Royal College of Surgeon of Edinburgh and I paid the price for the exam which is 550 pounds after that i studied for the exam from two to four hours a day for four months i was working during the time but i managed to extract two or four hours per day and believe me if you have two to four hours per day four months are enough and if you are working completely all the week and you can just manage to extract one hour then you need like six months I studied very hard, I studied smartly, and I studied from the right material. Stay tuned because at the end of the video, I'm going to tell you about the right material that you should choose. Just quick note, to take this exam, you need your MBBS, which means you have to be graduated before taking the exam. You can't take the exam pre-graduation. So after you graduate, any time after graduation, you can take the exam. Even after you're completing your MD or just one day after your graduation. So if you graduated, you can take this exam. If you didn't graduate, you can't. Another note, if you studied outside UK like me, then you need to take your MBBS and sign it with the surgeon who has fellowship in the college that you're taking the exam with. So if you are taking the exam with the Royal College of Surgeon of Edinburgh, you will take your MBBS, give it to the surgeon who has Royal College of Surgeon of Edinburgh full membership, then he will sign it and he will send it to the Royal College of Surgeon. After all of this, I went to the exam even though I didn't feel ready. You will never feel ready. I entered the exam. My exam was online at home because it was during COVID-19 2021 January. You can take the computer on computer in center, which is the commonest type, and in some countries it could be on paper. I took it online. Immediately when I opened the exam, I faced I was faced by paper one, which they call applied basic science. This was 180 questions that I needed to answer in three hours. These questions were mix of anatomy, physiology, pathology, some questions of pharmacology, microbiology, and extra material. It was tough three hours. 180 questions, three hours. Each question then has one minute to answer. Efficient, I'm gonna give you some of the tricks that I made during that exam. Firstly, I used to read the last sentence and if I found the last sentence is straightforward then I will pick the answer and move. Imagine this scenario with me. You have a long scenario patient with abdominal pain, hemoptysis, peptic ulcer, he take bantuprazole, PBIs and then at the end they ask you which part of the duodenum is intraperitoneal or extraperitoneal. Do you need to read the scenario for this question? Of course no, you don't need to read the scenario for this question. Sometimes this trick will not work. Some questions 
are so tricky and you need to read the scenario from o from a to z so determine start by reading the last sentence you get the answer you are sure it is the right answer for example it's an anatomical answer it's a relationship between organ and blood vessel so you don't like to dig inside the scenario if it's not clear then read the scenario from a to z secondly i used to take break every 10 questions if i answer from question 1 to 10 then i will just relax and rub my eyes like this for one minute and then start the next 10 questions it may seem weird, but believe me, this trick works. I gave it to a couple of colleagues and students, and it did help them. Don't underestimate it. It will help you. Third technique that I used, usually to see by default if I didn't know the answer or if it was a difficult question. I, wouldn't, I have one minute for each question. I'm not going to... I'm not going to lose time thinking about the answer. If I knew the answer, I will choose it. If I didn't, I will choose C. I I will flag the question and move to the next question. I'm going to tell you a secret. Some questions are not marked. This also has a psychological effect. So I wasn't stressed if I didn't know the answer. I will think like this question may be unmarked. I'm going to give you another relieving information. It will relieve the stress on your chest there is no negative mark so i answered all the questions because i know if i answer wrong they will not deduct from my right answers so there is no harm of answering all the questions after i finished this three stressful hours then i took my break cup of coffee for 15 minutes they are so generous <laughs> they gave us 15 minutes as a break and after the break, I came back to Beba 2, which they call principle of surgery in general. I opened my laptop. There was 120 questions waiting. I faced 120 questions mixed of surgical condition, trauma, pre-operative, perioperative, and post-operative care. I followed the same tricks that I used for Beba 1. And then the exam was finished. It took five hours, three hours, paper one, and two hours, paper two, and 15 minutes as a break. So it's a very long exam. After that, I went and celebrate, waiting for the result, which will appear four to six weeks later. And I passed. Now, as I promised, I'm gonna tell you about the resources that I used and how I use them. Firstly, I didn't use any textbook. I didn't use online courses. I tried to use MRCS part A pass test, but it didn't work fine for me. Instead of it, I used eMRCS, which is an online Q bank that has a price of 35 pounds for four months and 45 pounds for three six months the other resource i used is and this will be a surprise for students of uk they never heard about it it's a fauzia notes there's a couple of resources i wish i knew about but at that time i didn't know about them firstly teach me anatomy and then professor funky noted anatomist and anatomy zone i also regret not studying from Omeima sheets which is very very helpful especially for paper 2 which is usually more difficult than paper 1 I provided the link for all these materials in the description how I used to study I studied in the morning I will try my best to extract one hour or two hours before going to the hospital I will open EMRCS from the start and start practicing questions. I will write notes about difficult concept or if I want to memorize like inguinal canal or femoral canal. And immediately after write these notes, I will record them on my phone. So while I'm going to the hospital or going to the gym, then I will listen. And this is very effective and it helped me a lot. I'm gonna recap most of the important point we mentioned today. 
to the college that you're going to take with. Don't stress too much about that. The default is Edinburgh. <laughs> the exam is 550 pounds. It divided into paper one and paper two. All together, they are 300 questions. They should be answered in five hours. Three hours for paper one and two hours for paper, for paper two. It's important to follow some tricks during the exam that will help you ace the exam. You can't take the exam before you graduate. You need to graduate first. I know some people are extra excited. Without graduation, my friend, you can't take the exam, sorry. Don't stress yourself with a lot of resources. This will harm you more than it will benefit you. So just focus on two or three maximum resources, not more than that. And advise to focus on EMRCS, Fawziya notes, Umayma notes, and go to YouTube and Noted Anatomist or Teach Me Anatomy if you want to learn some of the difficult concepts. And that's all. Good luck with your exam. I hope I covered most of the points. I tried my best to make it as a story, how the exam went. And if I missed any point, don't hesitate to, to ask. I'm here to help. Good luck and I hope you will crush your exam. See you later.